name is Peter Speiser. Today you're looking at a, a German field kitchen. It was used by the German army to cook and provide food for one company and I portray the cook in the company. So I, I do a lot of research on the original recipes and I feed my people in my group a lot of authentic uh, German food that was I have proof positive that was fed to the Germans. The field kitchen has several um, nicknames. It goes by Gulash Cannon, Gulash Kanone, um, which it got in the First World War. In the Second World War, it kind of got Tunga Abwehr Kanone, which is similar to the Flugabwehr Kanone, which shoots at airplanes. It's anti aircraft gun. You have hung hunger, anti hunger cannon, so it kills kills hunger. So that's was also a very popular um, nickname for it. And, uh, we got that mainly because it has the smokestack and some models it, the smokestack folds down and it kind of looks like uh, uh, a cannon especially the, the horse drawn earlier models had a limber like like the big artillery pieces so this is, this is the main big stew cattle it has 100 liters which is about 25 gallons and it should feed about 100 people that's what the uh, layout is for for, for the thing, it depends on what you're actually cooking. If you're cooking potatoes, they have a lot of volume. You might only be able to feed 90 people. If you're cooking pasta, which is you know small, it can probably feed 140. And uh, you have here, this is the what they call nicknamed the coffee cattle. It's used to usually brew coffee or tea. It has the little spigot so you can fill all the canteens. And you have on in the back, you have the, what they call a frying pan because it's directly heated. It's a, another little tiny pressure cooker that you can also use for stuff. This thing is indirectly heated. There's two big kettles inside each other, and in the inside is glycerin, the same thing you use for soap, um, to transfer the heat evenly throughout uh, the kettle so the stuff on the bottom doesn't burn while the stuff on top is still raw. How it gets um, heated is each of these kettles has its own firebox. It has, um, it, it usually burns wood, but it could, it could burn um, coal or anything that's uh, solid that is um, burnable. Um, they have reports in, in the desert, they use camel dung in Ukraine where there's like no trees for miles and miles. They actually had to fire this thing with straw, which is of course um, <laughs> a little bit um, tedious. Field Kitchen started out in 1892, I believe. They, um, the, the Germans figured out a way to feed the people better. They had their, their own trailers. They put pre two pressure cookers on, on there. And it, it served very well in, in World War I. However, um, in World War I, they had um, anybody that was lame or you know, a little heavy or some stuff. They threw at, at the kitchen because they said, oh, you don't fight well, here, go, go, go cook meals. However, that turned out to be a very, very uh, bad idea. If I read um, in World War II manuals, the Germans figured out that they should actually use actual cooks or butchers or even uh, waiters later on um, to actually cook because they knew the um, food is very, very important for of the meals and the morale of the of the troops mm -hmm. so they, they really put a huge effort into educating the cooks they had schools there they had um, a lot of training and they only picked um, actual cooks by trade so I have yesterday I made a barley and beef with carrots and people seem to have liked that a lot so it's a recipe from the regular army field manual which I usually carry around. L later on today I'm making uh, carrots and potatoes and tomatoes and here I have been soaking since uh, last night. So. And uh, the, the whole art form is you have to put in all the ingredients at the right time because you want everything ready at the same time mm -hmm. versus you know the, the, the beans take two hours, the potatoes take like 30, 35 minutes, the tomatoes only take 15 so you have to you know Say okay at at, at 12:30 I want to serve food. So you have to go backwards of when you have to put in yeah. each ingredient. Every company had one of these, so um, it was one NCO. That's what, you know what what, what I said. That's the, the main cook. He had one helper, 
and then usually um, between one and three people were assigned to the kitchen to help out. Um, Kate, uh, kitchen duty was a, an honor in the German army because it uh, meant that you were away from all the fighting. You got extra um, food and you had gossip, uh, the opportunity to gossip at, at the kitchen because you know that's where you know everybody from the company was getting together. Sometimes they also you know had um, people from you know, local women helping out. Um, sometimes they had two com you know two kitchens next to each other for for supply purposes because they were supplied from battalion level, so it was just easier for um, for um, distribution of, of food. Mm -hmm. um, food was either supplied by the supply train or procured locally. It, Depending on the time of the war, at the beginning it was more supplied from 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 the supply trains and coming from, even from Germany. Um, towards the end of the war, they were living off more more or less off, off the land, and um, it it really depended on what was available. So you know, the, the cook had to make do with what um, ingredients he could uh, get. That could be. Um, the, uh, a mix of beef and barley and barley and beef for weeks on end, depending on what's come. Or it could be, you know, a very wide variety of foods that were available. And it really depended on what cook you ended up with, what, what you actually ate. They ate horse meat all, all through the war because um, the German army had a lot, a lot of horses. And um, if they died in battle or were getting lame, you know, you, you wouldn't want to waste that, that meat. I mean, there, there was some uh, recipes that I read for, for bear, for Russian bear. So it really depends on, you know, what, what kind of meat were available. Mm -hmm. And they were not very picky if you're hungry. So how, how close to the front lines did they get? Um, about, it really depended on, on the tactical situation. They might, they might be um, a, a, a couple miles back, usually at, at um, headquarters of the company so or battalion so that usually means a couple couple of um, miles depending on some you know on a tactical situation so you know you would have that on the front line you would have probably guys on, on the other end of this airfield where where, um, where the actual main front line is on the trenches and this would be pulled in at next at the little farmhouse the transportation uh, this one was drawn behind the uh, a truck because it has rub rubber tires. Mm -hmm. Most of the German field kitchens were actually horse-drawn. They had the huge um, wagon wheel kind of tires. Um, before that, before they actually ended up putting the, the mechanized um, field kitchens on, on rubber tires, they had them on the, on the truck beds. Um, a lot of en enterprising Germans, they took them off the truck bed, put some kind of wheels on it, and um, draw it behind the truck because they needed the, the room on the truck itself. So.